I'm going to go back to the main timeline and I'm going to select all these clips. I'm going to put them into their own nested sequence. The reason why I'm doing that, and the reason why I'm doing that, so this way I could put an adjustment layer on top of it and tint it. Right click, nest, and I'll call this title animation. And this is our current program monitor. So in here, I'll just double click on title animation. And I'm going to create an adjustment layer and I'm going to put that adjustment layer above all these other layers. Out here, new item, and that new item will be an adjustment layer. I'm going to take this adjustment layer and first I'll just put it over here. by scaling and just putting it up here and also dragging out my adjustment layer to be full size. If you right click in this case as you saw it was a little hard to originally put a clip so I had to scale this up. You can always right click and select add tracks and this will allow you to add a audio and video track a little higher. You could also go up there and delete track. So let me select track 6, right click, delete track and that will remove a track. On top of this adjustment layer, I'm going to place a tint, and this way we can colorize our graphic. So under Effects, Tint, and just drag that to the adjustment layer. And for white, we could choose we could choose a red to match the background if we wanted. Or if we want to pop a little more, maybe we'll choose blue. For here, if I play it. To get the holding line back, if we want that to be white, all we have to do is take the summer, which was our stroke summer, and drag it above the adjustment layer. Now it's only the fill that has the motion going throughout it. And if it looks a little too strong, I could take now this whole track and hold down the opacity for it. Making it a lot softer. And on top of this, we could add a blur to make it go away. So at the end of all this, we can use a fast blur on top of here. And for blurring this, it will be 100% until we want it to go away. Then I'll put my first keyframe. I'll move forward, let's say, in one or two seconds, which will be two seconds would be 60 frames. So at frame 620, we can increase the blurriness to make it fade out into nothing. On top of this, I could apply a turbulent displace. And you see why I applied the turbulent displace. Well, it does look cool. I didn't even animate it yet. But look at the text. It's interesting to have that streak of text. 
It's also bigger than it was a moment ago. If I remove this turbulent displace, you can see that it's popping this background and scaling it up. We scaled up this background before. Going to the gradients background, if we right click that and send it back to the open source and monitor, you can see that the gradient background is this scale is probably due to the fact that we scaled it, even though when we scaled it to begin with, we we're doing that to correct the resizing. So if I now flip these around where in the source monitor, I'll put my intro animation. I'll click and drag it there. By going under the title animation, where I scaled up this background here, and looking at its motion of 133, what if I set this back to 100? Would that make this background snap back into position? And it does. So it looks wrong here, but because we've applied a displacement up here, it's right again. You can see that by doing a progressive workflow, it's better because we initially need to see everything stabilized and fitting before we can move on to the next stage. And if we were never placing a displacement on top of this, we would never have to go back and make this unbalanced looking situation. So now that I have it correct here, if I flip everything around again by just going back to my intro, and now I can animate the amount of turbulent displacement as this happens to give that fun summertime feel. So if I start at negative 30 and animate it at frame zero, and this will be animating throughout. So maybe I'll go a few numbers forward and I'll animate it going forward like that. Maybe a little less because I don't like how the S is distorting there. And then going forward a little more. Animating like this. Maybe it finally settles down to zero at the end. So to preview it. Another way to animate the displacement, I'm going to click the stopwatch to remove it all. That removes all the keyframes. And at zero, it looks like this. We'd we'll be using evolution. So with the little number going through it, evolution will make this animate as if a point is passing through it and distorting it going around in a circle. So at frame zero for my evolution, I'll set down to zero. I'll put a keyframe. And by the end of my timeline, I'll back up a frame. My evolution, maybe this does it 360 degrees times more. There we go. So for that first number, it says one times 122. So if I want it to happen or evolve four times around 360, it would be 4x0, which means spin around the clock four times. The other thing that's good by having side-to-side -side views is that we could still work on the coloration using color picker. If you go to the adjustment layer for tint, I can pick instead of this color of blue, use the color picker and now I can roll over this image and let's say I pick that red. Click OK. So you can see that our color changed to red for the inside letters. And then maybe for the outline, which is controlled by this graphic. I could go under graphics. I could go under stroke and also use the eyedropper and pick another color for the scene. But I think I want to leave it white. 
because it's the most contrast that we could get. But I could try that hot red of the sun. And if that's the way you want to go, great. Otherwise, I think I'm going to convert back to white just so it makes it easier to read. I will leave the interior as red. Convert it back, I could just hit undo or color picker, I'm picking out white. Side by side, working with your graphics or any element or another video clip and being able to color pick from another video clip helps you match colors across clips quickly.